So, fasten your seatbelts. We're setting course for the most bizarre places in our universe, and you'll see the most mysterious phenomena few people have ever seen before. Recently, astronomers have discovered that the supermassive black hole at the center of our home Milky Way galaxy might be leaking. Why is it a significant change? Because it might mean that this black hole, called Sagittarius A-star, whose mass is 4.1 million times the mass of our Sun, isn't a sleeping giant as previously thought. It might still be active. And the leakage, recorded by scientists, may be the hole hiccuping while swallowing clouds of gas. Hey, I've been known to do that from time to time. During the research, the team of astronomers used the Hubble Space Telescope. It helped them spot a jet that looked like a blowtorch. It was pushing into clouds of hydrogen at the center of our galaxy. The jet seemed to spew gas like a hose directed into a pile of sand. This often occurs around other active black holes surrounded by the material drawn to them by their immense gravitational pull. Some of this material gets pulled into the black hole, but a small part of it gets swept outward by powerful magnetic fields. The research suggests that when a giant gas cloud gets too close to our supermassive black hole, it gets swallowed, and then the hole belches small jets of matter. Fermi bubbles might be the result of the belches that occurred around 2 to 4 million years ago. But recently, scientists have found another giant glowing bubble of hot gas. It aligned with the jet stretching for 35 light years or more from the supermassive black hole. Astronomers suspect that the jet could have plowed into this bubble of gas and inflated it. Now, let's visit some other breathtaking places in our universe. But be careful, some of them are extremely dangerous. Like this rotating neutron star called the Black Widow Pulsar. Just like its spider namesake, it's munching on its partner, a lightweight brown dwarf star. The more material this pulsar consumes, the more slowly it spins. The energy the neutron star is losing in the process causes the companion star to dwindle. If it does exist, Nuclear pasta is the strongest material in the entire universe. Formed from the leftovers of extinguished stars, this substance gets squeezed into spaghetti-like tangles of material. It can break, but only if you apply 10 billion times the pressure needed to shatter steel. How about visiting a planet where it rains glass? Nah, I'd rather not. You see, this bright blue exoplanet looks peaceful and slightly familiar. Don't you think it slightly resembles Earth? But this pretty appearance hides the planet's terrifying nature. The winds blow at 5,400 miles per hour on its surface. That's seven times the speed of sound. But that's not the worst. It rains glass sideways in this scorching hot alien world. Solar tsunamis are a solar phenomenon dubbed terminator events. These tsunamis take place at the sun's equator. Disastrous magnetic field collisions seem to cause ginormous twin tsunamis of plasma. These tsunamis tear across the star's surface, moving at a speed of 1,000 feet per second. They can last for weeks at a time and happen every decade or so. Now look at this space body. Its nickname is Electric Hyperion. This Saturn's moon is one of the most bizarre-looking moons in the solar system. But its appearance isn't the strangest thing about it. This pumice stone-like rock, pockmarked with countless craters, is also charged with static electricity. And it's flowing out into space. Look at this, a rogue planet with auroras. Lost in space and drifting through galaxies, rogue planets were once flung away from their parent stars. But one of them, 200 light years away from Earth, is different from the rest. It's a planet-sized object with a magnetic field 200 times stronger than that of Jupiter. This field is so powerful that it generates flashing auroras in the planet's atmosphere. Be sure to stay away from black holes. Do I really need to warn you? Yep, they're some of the most perilous objects in the universe. But how about mini black holes? Unlike their massive siblings, hypothetical mini black holes could be really tiny, not bigger than an atom. Even so, just one minuscule thing would have the mass of a thousand sedans. One theory claims that tons of micro black holes could have been created right after the Big Bang and the beginning of the universe. Some scientists even go as far as to say that a couple of mini black holes pass through our planet every day. Ooh, I'll bet you like our next stop, a burning ice planet. Faraway Neptune-sized exoplanet Gliese 436b is a paradox. 
it's made of scorching hot ice. The planet completes one full orbit around the red dwarf Gliese 436 in just two days. It means it's traveling remarkably close to its parent star. That might be the reason the planet's temperatures rarely drop below 800 degrees Fahrenheit. But the strangest thing? The planet hosts huge volumes of water ice known as Ice X, which remains solid despite blistering temperatures. Now, if you love jewelry, this next world is for you. A diamond planet. About 4,000 light years away from Earth, there's a planet that seems to be one enormous diamond. The planet is denser than any other discovered so far and consists mostly of carbon. It's so dense that astronomers think this carbon might be crystalline. This in turn might mean that at least some part of the planet is diamond. Moons orbiting other moons might exist, or they might not. Astronomers haven't agreed on this one yet. Planets orbit stars, and moons orbit planets. But then, why can't there be moon moons, also known as submoons, moonettes, and moons? It actually sounds like one of those flowery Hawaiian dresses, you know, moo-moos. But alas, no. Researchers claim that moon moons could exist, but the host moon has to be massive enough, the moon moon small enough, and there must be a wide gulf between these moons and the host planet. Now, I'll take you to the living fossil galaxy. DG Sat 1 is as big as the Milky Way, but it's nearly invisible because its stars are spread out incredibly thinly. But what makes the galaxy unique is that it's sitting all alone, unlike other galaxies of this kind. Those are usually found in clusters. It can mean that DG Sat 1 was formed in a different era, probably a mere 1 billion years after the Big Bang. If it's true, this galaxy is a real living fossil. Now, you won't be able to see the next space phenomenon, all because people can't see infrared light. And the phenomenon I'm talking about is an infrared stream from space. Ooh. Neutron stars are ultra-dense collapsed cores of giant stars. They usually emit X-rays or radio waves. But in 2018, astronomers discovered a weird stream of infrared light. It seemed to be coming from a neutron star 800 light-years away from our planet. This signal was probably generated by a disk of dust surrounding the star. But this theory hasn't been proven yet. Behind the orbit of Neptune lies the mysterious Kuiper Belt, filled with massive icy objects. The most curious thing about this space formation, though, is that scientists fail to explain the pattern of its movement. The only explanation they have is that Neptune might be hiding from our sight a ginormous planet. This hypothetical planet has already got the name Planet 9. And all we have to do is wait until its existence is confirmed. Or not. Let's visit our star. But we need to be careful not to come too close. Because the Sun's atmosphere is hotter than the surface of the star. While on the surface, the temperature reaches 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit, the upper atmosphere heats up to millions of degrees. Scientists suspect that explosive bursts of heat from the Sun may have something to do with this unique phenomenon. Now this space object is also worth visiting. Haumea, a dwarf planet orbiting in the Kuiper Belt, has a bizarre elongated shape and two moons. The day on this planet lasts 4 hours, making it the fastest spinning big object in our solar system. But the most mysterious thing about Haumea is that the planet has a thin 40-mile wide ring circling it. Ring a ding ding. The Milky Way is one of the biggest mysteries out there, literally. It's hard to figure out how big our home galaxy is. And one of the main reasons is because we live in it. Think of it as walking around a mall. You can tell it's big, but you can't be certain until you actually see it from a bird's eye view. The Milky Way consists of billions of distant stars that look like a string of lights from afar. So you just need to measure the distance between these stars and voila, you have the answer. Eh, not really. I might have forgotten to mention opaque clouds of dust blocking your view. Some scientists were stubborn enough to run computer models of how galaxies form and evolve. There's a halo around our galaxy, so the scientists wanted to see if there was some sort of a dead end in the Milky Way. They found out that the Milky Way spreads for 100,000 light years away from its center. It likely means that the entire galaxy is around 200,000 light years across. The problem with this estimation is that halos don't tend to have some final border since they simply fade away. It's like pointing a flashlight and trying to see precisely where the light ends. 
In 2013, the Hubble Space Telescope captured an image of something 25 million light-years away. It turned out to be a spiral galaxy, later called ESO 3738, with at least seven other galactic neighbors. And this galaxy is as thin as a pancake. A very shiny pancake. The telescope also took a photo of another galaxy cluster 65 million light-years away. It was called IC 335. It's another glorious glittering pancake floating in the vastness of space. The images the telescope took aren't the most accurate. It's hard to tell what exactly you're looking at. These disk galaxies have lots of dust clouds that can stretch for hundreds of light years across. They're mainly located near the centers of galaxies and are invisible in regular light. But they can be detected with the help of a blue filter. Anyway, this IC335 galaxy is an oval disk with huge clouds of gas and dust. This means stars constantly appear there. But not all galaxies create stars. A galaxy is born as a giant ball of slowly rotating gas that is steadily collapsing in on itself. As it starts spinning faster and faster, the pancake shape is formed. Ooh, pass me the syrup. It's like spinning pizza dough in the air after rolling it into a ball. The topping is stars, and the sauce is clouds of dust and gas. Are you getting hungry like me? Some galaxies can lose their gas and dust if they become part of a galaxy cluster. Then all these mini-galaxies orbit their common center of mass, with gas separating them. When a disk galaxy dashes through them like a speeding train, the pressure can blow away this dust and gas. From far away, it looks like you're staring at a DVD you're about to play. But if you traveled millions of light years to get a closer look, you'd see a dim disk filled with stars. You wouldn't even be able to tell you're inside it. You'd also see a bright blob of dust left by the red giants in the middle of the galaxy. Red giants are massive and very bright stars with low surface temperatures. But the images of these galaxies don't actually show us their real color. Cameras make up some of these hues so that you don't have to look at something fuzzy or grainy. People don't actually know the real colors of distant galaxies. Our galaxy has a lot of gas inside, like me, so we don't need to expect our home to dry up anytime soon. In fact, the Milky Way still produces new stars around 7 a year. But some galaxies fade out when they can no longer create stars. In the industry, they call it strangulation, and it happens when galaxies run out of gas, which means there's no more new material that can be used for star making. Gas and dust aren't the only things you can find in a galaxy. Just like a magician pulling a rabbit, flowers, or other things out of their magic hat, galaxies have other surprises. Like planets, those balls of matter spinning around themselves and around other things. Well, technically, planets are far from being perfectly round in shape. But they aren't also flat like spiral galaxies. It's mostly because of gravity. Its force is so strong that a planet pulls everything towards its center, taking the shape of a sphere. In the process, all the edges and anything else that might stick out get smoothed out. But the smaller a space body is, the less round it is. Take a comet. It doesn't always have a smooth surface. It's small, and therefore, its edges are rugged and pointy. Given the size of Earth, it's safe to say the gravity is strong here compared to that of the Moon or any smaller sized space object. And because of our planet's constant rotation, there's an outward bulge on Earth. This tug of war between the gravity pulling inward and the planet's spin doesn't allow Earth to be a perfect ball. On top of Earth not being a perfect sphere, the planet is also tilted. This design flaw is responsible for the seasons we have. This tilt could happen because millions of years after Earth was formed, it probably collided with a protoplanet, a large space body developing into a planet. Venus is unique because it rotates backward compared to the rest of its peers. If you were standing on Venus, the hottest planet in our solar system, you'd see the sun rise in the west and set in the east. But you'd have to make it on time to observe this phenomenon. A day on Venus lasts for more than 240 Earth days. For a long time, scientists believed that the sun's strong pull on Venus was responsible for such a long day. But new theory claims that Venus used to spin just like Earth and the rest of the planets. But at one point, it just flipped its axis 180 degrees. It doesn't mean the planet abruptly stopped halfway through the rotation and started to move backward. When theory suggests that a large comet or object struck the planet in the past. This might have caused it to change the direction of its rotation. But many scientists doubt this theory. 
If you observe the moon for some time, you may notice that it's the same face staring at you every night. The truth is that the moon does rotate, but very slowly. It takes our planet's natural satellite 27 Earth days to rotate around its axis. Plus, the moon rotates at the same rate that it orbits Earth. The side we always see is called the near side of the moon. And the side that's not facing us is, you guessed it, the far side of the moon. It also has the nickname the dark side of the moon. Uranus's rotation axis is 98 degrees relative to the plane of the solar system, which basically means that the planet spins on its side. For a while, scientists believed that a large object firing through space knocked into Uranus, causing it to tilt. But here's one problem. Uranus's moons are covered in ice. A collision so powerful that it made the planet tilt would have resulted in disrupting the moon's movement and their position. But they seem relatively untouched, and all the ice covering them is still intact. But any major changes happening with Uranus would have generated enough energy to melt the ice. Another reason for Uranus' strange position might be its rings. Yup, Uranus has rings just like Saturn, except they're lighter and fainter. Saturn's rings are mostly billions of chunks of ice and rock floating in orbit. Some particles can be the size of a pebble, while others can reach the size of a house. Wow! Other particles are broken up comets, asteroids, and moons torn apart by Saturn's gravity. If you observe the rings from afar, they look like colorful stripes made up of thousands of different streaks, but there are actually only eight layers of rings. Uranus might have had rings that were just as glorious as Saturn's around 4.5 billion years ago. The balance between Saturn's gravity and its rings might be responsible for keeping the planet upright so that it doesn't tilt over. If Uranus had the same rings, they could prevent the planet from toppling over. The way to solve Uranus's tilting problem might be for the planet to get its rings back. They would help Uranus keep its balance. On the other hand, hey, we like it just the way it is. Betelgeuse, a red supergiant. This ball of boiling plasma is one of the largest stars in our galaxy and one of the brightest. It's about 500 times larger than the sun. But Betelgeuse is pulsating, getting bigger and smaller. At its peak, it becomes 800 times its average size. If this star were a bucket, it would fit about 300 million suns, even though its weight is only 17 times greater. And here, about 500 light years away, is Earth. We launch our faster than light spaceship and set off on our journey to Betelgeuse. A few seconds, and we've already traveled 240,000 miles and now are close to the moon. That's nine and a half trips around the Earth. A traditional rocket-powered spacecraft would take three days to get here. We're near Mars now. The flight to the Red Planet usually takes about seven months. Several rovers are now at work here, as well as the first ever flying drone, Ingenuity. The surface of Mars is three times smaller than that of Earth. The planet is also ten times lighter. People hope to build a human colony here soon. Right beyond Mars, we have to wiggle and constantly dodge space rocks. This is the asteroid belt. It contains debris and space objects of different sizes and shapes. The biggest of them is Ceres. Its surface is slightly larger than the area of Argentina, and its weight is about 1% of the moon's. The total weight of the entire asteroid belt is 25 times less than the moon's. Next, we pass gas giants Jupiter and Saturn. These are the largest planets in the solar system. They're also the heaviest, even though they don't have a solid surface. Then, we travel by Uranus and Neptune. They're called ice giants. And at the very edge of the solar system, we see Pluto. It was once considered a full-fledged planet, but now it's not even on the list. After that, we're 4.3 billion miles away from our home. It took the New Horizons space probe about nine years to get here. Hold on to your seat, we're speeding up. We're passing through the Kuiper Belt. There are lots of asteroids and blocks of ice here. These are some of the oldest building materials in our solar system. Billions of years ago, our whole world looked like a cloud of these asteroids. We're traveling further through dark space and reach the edge of the solar system, the heliosphere. All this time, we've been moving with the solar wind. But now, it starts to slow down, collides with the interstellar wind, and heats up. This is called the termination shock. The Voyager 1 space probe got to this point in December 2004. 
we're moving to the region where the heliosphere ends and interstellar space begins. This is the heliopause. In 2012, Voyager crossed this boundary and became the first ever human-made object in interstellar space. But the message from Voyager reporting this event came to Earth almost a year later because of the huge distance. It took 35 years for Voyager 1 to travel all this way. And here it is. The probe is as long as a car and weighs like two motorcycles. You can see a gold plate on its hull. It's a message from people to potential civilizations out there. It has pictures of Earth's landscapes, recordings of human speech, and our DNA. As of 2021, Voyager has been operational for almost 43 years. The probe has traveled 14 billion miles. That's like 152 Earth to the Sun distances. And it's still making its way through space at 38,000 miles per hour. Now, we're approaching the nearest star to our solar system. It's Proxima Centauri. We're so far from home that even light needs more than four years to travel this distance. If we used a traditional rocket, the trip would take us 73,000 years. The reason we wanted to get here was because of an Earth-like planet called Proxima Centauri b. It's 10% larger than Earth and slightly heavier. It lies in the habitable zone of its host star. It means that water might exist on the planet in its liquid state, and there can be life that forms here. But the star itself occasionally produces flares. Recently, its brightness increased almost 1,000 times. During that time, it emitted so much radiation that even if there were some forms of life on the planet, they probably ceased to exist. We're now more than eight light years away from Earth. The brightest star in our night sky is Sirius. Seriously. It's so bright that you can see it even during the day. But in reality, there are actually two stars, Sirius A and B. They orbit around a common center of gravity, and these stars are moving toward our solar system at almost 5 miles per second. That's the same as the maximum speed of a top-of-the-line supercar on Earth. Foot down, and we've arrived at a potentially habitable planet 39 light-years away from Earth. This is TRAPPIST-1D. Its host star is a white dwarf. It's a cold star, 10 times smaller and lighter than the Sun. There are seven planets around it, but TRAPPIST-1D is the most similar to Earth. It's only 30% smaller and three times lighter, but it has a rocky surface and the temperature here is 48 degrees Fahrenheit. You'd feel comfortable here wearing a light jacket. There might be an atmosphere, mountains, seas, and oceans here which means this planet might be suitable for a human colony. But it would take about 677,000 years to get here using traditional rockets. And here's our main goal, Betelgeuse. It'd take nearly 8.7 million years to travel here from Earth in a current day spacecraft. This star is so big that our ship looks like a grain of sand on a giant beach. We have to jump back in time to find out what happened to this star. First, there was a beautiful nebula. It's a cloud of multicolored space dust and debris. Then, it began to shrink under its own weight. In the core of the nebula, a nuclear reaction began. Boom! And the star was born. At first, Betelgeuse was very massive and hot, but it didn't expand and remained stable. Let's look into its heart. The nuclear reactions in the star's core create a lot of heat and energy. This energy produces the force that pushes on the walls of the star from the inside and causes it to expand. But at the same time, the star is very heavy. That's why gravity pushes on it from the outside. If these two forces are balanced, the star remains stable. But over time, the star runs out of its fuel, helium and hydrogen. That's when heavier elements in the core join the nuclear reaction. When they burn, they release more energy and heat than gravity can hold and the star starts expanding. That's what's happening to Betelgeuse right now. It's already so big that if you put it in the center of our solar system, its edge would touch the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. Betelgeuse will continue to expand until it exhausts its fuel completely. Then the gravity will win. The star will shrink in size, and then an enormous boom will happen. A supernova explosion will be so blinding that Betelgeuse will shine brighter than the moon in the night sky. Luckily, Earth is too far away for this explosion to cause any harm to people. 
a strong stream of matter that will be ejected from the explosion site won't reach the solar system until 6 million years later. Even so, the solar wind will stop this flow, so we'll be safe. Betelgeuse is likely to explode at any time in the next 10,000 years. But some scientists say it won't happen in the next 100 millennia. Back to the moment before the explosion of Betelgeuse, there can be another, more interesting scenario. Gravity might compress the massive core of the star with such force that a black hole will appear in its place. Black holes are the heaviest objects in the universe. They have incredible gravitational force. Even light can't escape their gravitational trap. The Betelgeuse black hole will begin feeding on cosmic dust and whatever is left of the star. All this debris and light from other stars will get frozen near the event horizon of the growing black hole. For the first time in history, we'll be able to watch the birth of this mysterious object. But in reality, Betelgeuse is too light to become a black hole. Most likely, after the explosion, it'll turn into a white dwarf that will gradually fade until it becomes invisible.